All right. Well, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for being here to hear us uh, talk about uh, the takedown of a criminal enterprise operating in a business in Orange County. Um, they have been the hotbed of criminal activity in that business for over 15 years. So the PR house, which is located at Lake Underhill and Goldenrod, has been the scene of drug sales, shootings, overdose deaths, and even a homicide. Uh, so this year, the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and the DEA initiated an investigation with the specific goal of shutting the PR house down. So the operators of the PR house were selling cocaine to between 60 and 80 people a day. We seized nine kilos of cocaine, 13 firearms, two of which had the serial numbers removed. And so 18 people were arrested and facing charges of racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeering, and armed tra trafficking of cocaine, which is a life felony. Uh, so in a moment, you'll hear from MBI Director Ron Stucker, who will talk about the investigation. And so I want to talk to you about why, in addition to the great police work on this case, that our nuisance abatement ordinance here in Orange County is important and, and a critical tool in addressing uh, these types of criminal enterprises that are operating out of businesses. So if a criminal organization is operating uh, in a fixed location, such as a business, if those folks in that business are facing charges, well, they just transfer control over to someone who's not facing charges and continue to commit their illegal crimes and activity. Uh, so the nuisance abatement ordinance places civil responsibility on the landowner whose responsibility it is to keep that property uh, crime free. And so you've heard me talk about this issue we have with uh, many of our illicit after hours clubs and hookah lounges. Uh, that operate uh, without liquor licenses uh, or in violation of their liquor license. And so these um, illicit operations, after hours clubs, uh, like the PR house, attract a lot of criminal activity uh, to include drug sales, of course, and even uh, more violent crimes, shootings and homicides, many of which you have reported on. Uh, so to help address that, one of my legislative priorities for 2024 is amending state law to make it a felony to uh, serve alcohol uh, illegally or, or without a license and also increase the fines uh, for that. Uh, so uh, the importance of that would be to also add unlawful alcohol sales uh, to the list that would trigger the nuisance abatement program. So in an effort um, to help us uh, shut down these places if they continue their criminal activity. Uh, so this time I'll turn it over to uh, Director Ron Stucker from the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, as the Sheriff said, we're, uh, we're excited about this case. Uh, the location was uh, a, a bar named uh, PR House. Uh, previously, it went by the name to Casa Bariqua, uh, and it's at the corner of Lake Underhill and Goldenrod, 7343 uh, Lake Underhill Road. It has been operating as an illegal enterprise, we believe, for probably up to two decades. We have crime line, report, crime line tips as far back as 2007 in which uh, citizens, people were calling in tips on the owner of the bar, the bar itself, associates of the bar, talking about drug dealing, talking about firearms violations, talking about gambling. And we've probably received, or the sheriff's office has received, you know, over 20 tips over the years from various people talking about this criminal enterprise and what they're doing there. Um, the owner of the bar is a woman named uh, Rosa Lopez. She was actually arrested back in 2001 for racketeering and operating a gambling establishment. And just to give you an example of some of the crimes that have occurred in and around that property, uh, in 2016, there was a homicide in the parking lot. In January of 2017, there were shots fired inside the business. Uh, August of 2017, a person died of a uh, drug overdose inside the business, which was later determined to be a combination of drugs, including cocaine and fentanyl. In November of 2017, there was another person who overdosed inside the business. And in 2022, the Orange County Sheriff's Office Homicide Unit investigated an overdose death involving cocaine and fentanyl, in which it's alleged and we believe that the drugs were supplied by the operators of the PR house. Um, over the years, the Orange County Sheriff's Office has really done uh, a tremendous job. They've been very persistent. They've been very tenacious. They've been going in and making arrests. They've, they've served search warrants over the years. But the bar continued to exist. 
And this is just in a strip plaza, and there's legitimate businesses all around it. Other food establishments, I think there's a boxing club, there's a 24-hour vet clinic next door. So there's legitimate businesses there, but these people continue to, to sell drugs. Uh, to give you an idea of the volume that they were selling, uh, between June of 2021 and March of 2022, the sheriff's office stopped 79 people coming out of PR House. Every one of them had cocaine on them. Some of the labs showed was a mixture of cocaine and fentanyl. And those drugs they seized all had similar markings and similar packaging. Uh, following up on that, the sheriff's office did some undercover operations to buy drugs out of there, which had the same similar markings and packaging, which still confirmed to us that that was the source location for the drugs that were coming in into that area. Uh, despite the sheriff's office uh, work, they, they continue to persist. For example, in um, June of this last year, in June of 2023, the sheriff's office served a search warrant at PR House. They seized cocaine, they seized cannabis, they seized firearms. By noon the next day, PR House had resupplied their set of drugs, they had set up business, and they were selling again. So as the sheriff said, our goal was to make this place go away, that this place should no longer continue just to open really as an open-air drug market in, in this plaza, in this neighborhood. And so MBI, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and DEA uh, joined forces to initiate an investigation. And what our goal was is to get the owners and the operators of this place so that we could actually shut down the business. And instead of picking off one or two people here or there, seizing small amounts of drugs, was to actually close this business down and no longer allow it to operate. We did some financial analysis on the business and also working with a state alcohol, beverage, and tobacco. Uh, They did not sell enough beer and food out of that place to probably keep the lights on. Uh, Their sole revenue source was, or primary revenue source, was the sale of illicit drugs coming out of there and it was simply a front to sell illegal drugs. Um, Our investigation showed, as the sheriff said, probably 60 to 80 people every day would enter PR House. They would be in there two, three minutes, not purchase anything legitimate, such as beer or a sandwich or anything else, and would leave. And so 60 to 80 people a day were were going in there to buy cocaine. Um, There were some days that we observed over 100 people would enter spend a small amount of time and come out. So you can start doing the math on that about the, no, about the amount of cocaine that they were selling out of this business. We were also able to establish through our investigation that the traffickers, the drug traffickers inside the business were all armed. Uh, they were dangerous. Uh, during October of this year, during our investigation, we learned that some of the traffickers from PR House were getting ready to commit a home invasion. And the sheriff's office working uh, with MBI were able to immediately take some action to avert that crime and to make sure that it did not occur. As the sheriff mentioned, we have uh, charged uh, 18 different defendants. Uh, We provided you a poster here, and I think we also handed out some face sheets which outlined the various defendants and who they are and what their uh, their charges are. The charges range from racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeering, armed trafficking of cocaine, conspiracy to traffic of cocaine, conspiracy to traffic amphetamines, and possession of a place used to manufacture a controlled substance with a minor presence. Um, In addition, the (coughs) firearms in the place are often juveniles that were present with the cocaine traffickers while they were trafficking this amount of cocaine. Uh, The armed trafficking of cocaine over 28 grams is a life felony, and the racketeering charges and the possession of a place uh, to manufacture a drug with juveniles present is a life felony, I'm sorry, a first degree felony. And the evidence in the case is going to demonstrate that uh, Rosa Lopez, the owner of PR House, was not only aware of the activity, but she was helping to direct the activity that occurred in there. Uh, As the sheriff mentioned, we've seized over nine kilos of cocaine, 13 firearms. Two of those firearms had their serial numbers removed. Uh, So this is a joint investigation with the sheriff's office, MBI, and DEA. It's being prosecuted by the attorney general's office of statewide prosecution. And as the sheriff said, the nuisance abatement is very important during this process. Often, these fixed-based operations will simply move to a new location. Uh, They'll simply hand off ownership of the business or the LLC to somebody else, and they'll continue to operate. Uh, Our goal this time, working with nuisance abatement, working with alcohol, beverage, and tobacco, working with the Department of Revenue, and just with criminal charges, is to make sure that they completely go away. And the landlord has worked cooperatively with us after the arrest. They have evicted PR House from the premises, and so they no longer operate 
in this plaza where they've been operating for the last 15 to 20 years. And so we're very pleased about that and hope now that a legitimate business will go in there and do a legitimate business along with the other people that are, that are in that plaza and in that neighborhood. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you all might have or for the sheriff or myself. Yeah, just like uh, Director Stucker said, that we've made hundreds of arrests there. We've done search warrants. Uh, you know, so many times, either the cases aren't successfully prosecuted, or we just need time to, to build a case and put the, the best case together. And that's, that's why the Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation exists, where we have members from all Central Florida law enforcement. We work with DA, we work with Florida Department of Law Enforcement, who's here, and put together a high-level case of racketeering, rather than just picking these people off one at a time and arresting them for the possession of cocaine, we're tr we tried to tie it back to the owner, and that's what the that's what the purpose uh, of this investigation was to get to the owners, uh, shut down the club, and if you think about the you know the regular street cop uh, deputy on the road, they, they can't do all that, right? Uh, yeah, they can make the arrest and make the best case possible, but once MBI uh, and all these agencies start putting all the information together, uh, that's when um, you know, you see the outcomes of all these people charged with racketeering, say, racketeering and conspiracy to commit racketeering, and we're able to shut the, the property down. And how long did this particular operation take? Think about five. Sorry. <coughs> That's kind of long. Did this investigation take? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the sheriff's office had been working on it for, uh, you know, a couple years prior, and then we got involved with DEA this last spring. So we probably, the spring of 2023, MBI began to very actively become involved in the investigation. Yes, they were children, uh, children of some of the drug traffickers. They would bring their own children, and while they were in there armed and selling cocaine, there would be children present, uh, which, of course, just increases the danger to the, those children. Your thoughts on that? Well, my only thought is, how horrible is that? I mean, you, I mean one, you're selling drugs. Two, you're armed selling drugs, but then you bring your own child into that environment. Uh, we all know what happens when people sell drugs. People try to rip each other off. Sometimes, as we said, inside this business, there's been shootings inside the business. There's been overdose inside the business. I mean, the, the history of the business shows how, how bad it was and for the calls for service there and what the sheriff's office has had to address over the years. So obviously interjecting a, a child into that is, is horrible. We did. Um, one of the um, uh, defendants up here, you see An Anibal Lopez was one of the main suppliers, so he did not actually work in the business. He was one of the main suppliers for them, and so that was part of our investigation to determine where did they get their drugs from, from to bring into the business to sell. Correct. No, they are not all related. Um, Anibal is not related to Rosa. Uh, Rosa's son is the other Lopez up there, whose first name is escaping me right now. <coughs> it's important to get the owner of the business because often the owner of the business is not always directly involved in the hand-to-hand -hand transaction of the drugs. So as the sheriff said, we can go in there, they can go in there and arrest someone doing a hand-to-hand -hand transaction. Of course, what does the owner of the business say? Oh my gosh, I had no idea, that's terrible. Let me fire these bad employees, my bad bartender or my bad doorman or whoever. And then all they do is replace someone else and they're reaping the profits of it, but they're working behind the scenes. So it was important in this investigation for us to go after that person, but also identify where the drugs were coming from for the higher level. Well, yes. Well, all drugs that come to Orange County come from overseas. I mean, they're not manufactured here. So every, every, everything connects back through the Dominican, through Mexico, through China, depending on what, what drug it is. So, yes, obviously it's coming from internationally. Uh, we have to determine on our investigations what level we're going to go to. 
the focus of this investigation, the goal was to have a community impact on that neighborhood and to make sure that we could do something to get that bar out of there that's been selling drugs there for years. It is, and like the sheriff said, I mean, that you have to understand, I mean, we now have looked back and now we see the big picture. But if you go time by time, if you get a tip from crime line, that tip may say person A is doing something bad, but you don't have a lot to go off of that. Then you have to launch that investigation. The sheriff's office stopping the people that are leaving the bar shows somebody in possession of it, but then you have to go back and try to prove who sold that drug to them. And so, unfortunately, PR houses, like a lot of places in the community, where lower level people it can be addressed by patrol functions by those type of things but to get to the higher level people we have to do a more complex investigation and so that's what we did here is to do that the sheriff's office addressed all those complaints as they came in they were addressing the overdose deaths they were doing everything as those individual calls came in what we do at mbi and dea as part of our investigation is to look at an overarching for the enterprise and to go after the owners of the business and you really can't have a patrol deputy look at who the owner of a business is. They're going from call to call to do that. So that's our role to do that. And to clarify, are these individuals being prosecuted by the Office of Statewide Prosecution? Yes, they're all being prosecuted by statewide prosecution. And considering the DEA's involvement in the investigation, is there a possibility that they could be still federal? Probably not at this time. I mean, we make those decisions up front about who the prosecutor would be. Um, and so at this point, the Office of Statewide Prosecution is, has jurisdiction over this case and has taken the lead on the prosecution. Do you have an amount of guns that were confiscated, drugs, pounds? Yeah, during MBI and DEA's investigation, we've seized a little over nine kilos of cocaine. Uh, there were 13 firearms seized. Uh, two of those had the serial numbers removed. Those were a combination of long guns and handguns. And then there was some miscellaneous pills and amphetamines that were seized also, but I don't have the exact count of the number of pills off the top of my head. And it's strange what happens, but from a prosecution standpoint, you can see these people are not now convicted, then they Well, as we said, I mean, if they're convicted of these charges, um, the racketeering charges, commit, conspiracy to commit racketeering, the possession of a place to manufacture drugs, the juvenile present are all first-degree felonies. Um, depending on their past criminal history, which some of them have extensive criminal histories, you could be looking at 30 plus years in prison. Um, uh, the arm trafficking of cocaine over 28 grams is a life felony. So I mean, we're looking at, they're looking at some very substantial prison terms if they're convicted.